This is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. If you're interested in innovative construction methods, tractors, and homesteading, well, then you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell, and join in on the conversation. Hey, I'm Eric Lubson with Beercast Studio, but also an alumni of Carolina Timberworks and a timber framer from many years ago. When I told my wife, Gesh, about what we were doing making this video, she said, oh, that's great. You're going to answer the question that everybody is afraid to ask. Well, what the hell is a timber frame anyway? The difference between a timber frame and other structures is the way the individual parts are connected. Timber frames utilize wood-to-wood -wood joinery and rarely use steel parts, whereas post and beam structures are connected with metal fasteners and connectors. So what we've got here is a display, and it shows a lot of the typical joinery that you would find in a timber frame that would be a, a structure that could be centuries old or maybe even just a barn that was built 150 years ago. Let's go back in time, 100 years, 200 years, or more. And what we're finding is that there's a method of construction that's widely used that is employing solid timbers, interlocking joinery, and wooden pegs to create this structural framework of a building that will serve for hundreds of years, centuries. So let's take this thing apart and have a closer look. And what we're doing is showing you how something like this would have been created in the first place. So you can see those two pieces coming apart. Turn to the camera here, and the first thing we'll talk about is just this rectangular pocket, or what's called a mortise, that's in the post. And so traditionally, before power tools or even uh, modern machinery, you would have your timber out on your sawhorses. You would have that pocket lined out and then something like an auger manually drilling a series of holes into that timber to create that depression or that recess. So once that auger was, you're done doing that work, you'd have a series of holes, but you still have to make it rectangular. That where you come in with something like a corner chisel or a framing chisel and remove the excess from the corners and to square up that opening. And once that process is done and you've taken it down to the requisite depth of the two pieces that are going to go together, then you've got your completed mortise or pocket in that timber. So the second part of how you would do this is your joining piece, your, your secondary piece here, uh, you have to remove material from that overall thickness. And so you can see shoulder cuts were made and pairing or removal of that material to go from its original width down to the tenon width. So this second extension or tab or piece that is going into the mortise is referred to as the tenon. Now, in our mock-up, the hole's already drilled, but historically, that hole would not be there yet. So in fitting those two pieces together, you would test that fit make sure it's, it's snug and secure, then you could drill that hole through both of those pieces. What we've got as a fastener is an oak dowel here, sometimes referred to as a tree nail or a trunnel, that once that hole's drilled through, then we can drive that pin in and lock those two pieces together. What you'll hear is that sound changing a little bit as it's driven to lock those two pieces together. So that one inch peg is now going through the wall of the mortise, through that tenon and out the other side. So you've got a, an interlocked piece or interlocked series of pieces here that are now forming this rigid, strong assembly. So you can imagine horizontal timbers, vertical timbers, braces on the angle, creating a really strong, really rigid structural framework for a building that's going to last a long, long time. And so the history of this is that you've got a construction method that uses plentiful raw materials and where the craftsman using the tools to create the interlocking joints, but then the entire assembly is something that is all wood. And what you've got here is 
interplay of materials that really work well together and they kind of work to each other's strengths. Here's a good question for you, Eric. You're an owner of a timber frame company. You've been in this industry for a lot of years. Why go to all of this time and expense of creating this interlocking joinery when there's other ways to build? Years ago when we made these, back in 2012, we went out to the scrap pile and, and got some Douglas fir. Same, same stick of wood. And you can see there's a, it says fabrication date September 17th. So we said, okay, let's, let's make another one, but let's just not make it with mortise and tenon joinery. Let's, let's just screw it together. Okay. So what we did then was, you can see one, uh, the hole here. We plugged one of the holes. Okay. And we put two German structural screws. And when we built it, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Yeah, because those screws, you know, they're aggressively threaded. They've got a big head on them. So when they drive, they really pull those things together, don't they? Right. So why go to all the time and expense of this interlocking joinery? It's built for the ages. This, this is built from green wood, which uh, in addition to being sustainable, green, when we say green, we mean uh, it's wet. Okay? Right. So the, the tree was cut not that long ago. And so it's still full of water. All right. And as wood dries, it shrinks. And it's the opposite of human beings. As we get older, we get shorter. Timber doesn't really shrink on its length. So when I, when I was saying the opposite of people, okay, people as they get older, look at me, okay, <laughs> tend to get wider, all right, and shorter. Wood tends to get, not change in height, but it tends to get skinnier. Thinner. In, uh, thinner. Okay, gotcha. So, so we're, we're changing a dimension this way. So then what's happening once that timber starts to shrink when it's held together with those fasteners? Okay. Watch here. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm moving I can see it. it. I mean, so the only thing holding that now is those two screws. Right. That were really tight at one point, but aren't anymore. Not as as rigid as the mortise and tenon joint. Okay, it feels kind of steady that one, Eric. Yeah. All right. Let me let's let's put some weight on it. Okay. No, you can hear it straining. You can hear it straining. All right. But not it's moving. If you've ever built a piece of furniture, use screws to put it together like a little table out on your deck. And you come back a, a year or two later, you're seeing the same thing, okay? The screws are loose. The wobbly table. You're building a structure for the ages yeah. that's gonna continue to perform the way it was designed to perform, even though time and the elements have had their effect. You're still relying on the interlocking joinery versus something that was a threaded fastener that was tight at one point, but now has loosened or gapped. I don't know how long those metal fasteners exposed to the moisture in the air, okay? I mean, wood is hydroscopic. It, it absorbs and releases uh, moisture just like a sponge. Is it 100 years before those, those screws fail? One way to say why go to all this time and expense, you had mentioned that, you know, what's the longevity of metal fasteners over time and repeatedly stressed or exposed to the elements, things like that. When you're timber framing, you've got something that has a proven track record. You've got a, a method that has stood the test of time. And so what would you say to something like that? Why would you go to all this expense and time? I think the, the Swiss actually have the best answer for that. It's the most sustainable answer. Build it once.